The stomach channel is the second largest channel in the body with 45 acupuncture points. So I wanted to make it easier to digest and I created part one and part two. Part one obviously is here. Part two, the link is located below this video in the description so you can watch it right after. Let's make this easy to grasp and fun to learn. Let's do it! Hi, I'm Clara from Acupro Academy and I create acupuncture and Chinese medicine content for practitioners and students, making it easy to grasp and fun to learn. If you found this of value, please give me a like or even subscribe so you don't miss out on any future video. And now, let's rock it. Welcome back to my channel. This is, as you know, the stomach meridian. We're going to look at the pathway of the stomach meridian. Then we will look at all the points, locations and functions. That's how we're going to go about it. So let's start right away. First of all, the stomach meridian or channel, depending on how, which word you want to use, is the second longest meridian in the body. It has 45 points. It is a foot meridian and it is a foot yang Ming Meridian. And like I said, it has 45 points bilaterally. So if it is a foot young meridian, first of all, it is a young meridian. And it is a foot meridian because it finishes at the foot. Every meridian either starts or finishes at the hand or at the foot. And they are either a hand or a foot meridian. Now, I've already done the large intestine young Ming hand Yong Ming Meridian. This is the foot Yong Ming Meridian. So the large intestine and the stomach have a big relationship as a meridian because they're both Yong Ming, which translates loosely by brighter Yong, because this was the Ming dynasty, which was very bright, very beautiful, very posh, I guess, at the time. So the Yong Ming Meridians, there's two, large intestine and stomach. So those are really strong meridian to utilize all the points on those two meridians are going to be powerful because both those meridians carry the most chi and the most blood. So the stomach and the large intestine have the most chi and the most blood of all meridians. So they're very powerful. Also, it's interesting to see that the stomach is at the beginning of digestion and the large intestine is at the end of digestion. They're very much related. Make sense? Okay, so the yang mean foot stomach meridian is most active from 7 to 9 a.m. So that two hours in the morning, breakfast time, after we fasted all night, all night and we didn't eat anything, it's time to start opening up the stomach. So this is a really good way to start by your warm water with a little bit of lemon, a squeezed lemon juice into it to open up the digestive system and then start having a nutritious mindful, enjoyable breakfast, not a quick coffee on the run. That's what we want to do. We want to be mindful to the beginning of the day and really nourish the body with the breakfast from 7 to 9 a.m. Okay, so then the path pathway itself. So if you had looked at my previous videos, when we look at the cyclical flow of qi, we start, let's say, the lung, and the lung ends up at the large intestine, that's the flow of qi. The large intestine follows through the flow of qi to the stomach, and the stomach ends up into the spleen, and the spleen goes to the heart, etc., etc. So, at the end of the large intestine, the large intestine meridian finished at large intestine 20, right by the Ela Nazi. So, the stomach meridian actually starts by the side of the nose, not at stomach 1. Interesting. That's a question I ask my students every year in school and class as a quiz. This is a quiz question quite often. Where does the stomach meridian start? It starts at the Elanazi or at the side of the nose. Then it will climb up. This is my beautiful board with my beautiful drawing. As you can see, I'm fabulously, very beautifully an artist that should be showcased everywhere. I'm joking. If you don't know my sarcastic sense of humor by now, you'll get used to it very soon. Okay, so it starts at the side of the nose, and then it goes up to stomach one, which is behind the infraorbital infra ridge, right? And then we're going to go down the face to the jaw, back up along the side of the ear, and to the head. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
This is the main meridian pathway. Then we start with the first branch. The first branch starts around stomach five and will go down along the side of the neck, which 9, 10, and 11 will have those three points on the neck. It will go into the supraclavicular fossa, so behind your clavicle, enters the body and goes to connect with the stomach organ and the spleen organ. That is the first branch. And the whole stomach meridian is about branches. When you think about it, the main meridian is only on the face. The rest is all branches. Very interesting, right? The second branch starts at the supraclavicular fossa, where the first one entered the body, and it's going to go all along the trunk, right? It's going to go down with stomach 12, all the way to stomach 18, then we're going to go 19, all the way to 30. So the whole trunk is going to have a bunch of points. And then we're going to go on the thigh with stomach 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 at the knee, 36. And we're going to continue all along the lateral aspect of the leg and lower leg until we reach the ankle where we have stomach 41. And then we'll have stomach 42, 43, 44, and 45, which ends up at the second toe, the lateral side of the second toe. So that's the first one. Second branch, or I should say third branch, not second, but third branch, starts at stomach 42 on top of the dorsum of the foot and finishes at the big toe, at the medial side of the big toe, where it links or connects to its meridian, opposite meridian, which is the spleen. So spleen one will start at the medial side of the big toe, right? And then, because it's not over, in a lot of books, we also have a branch that starts from stomach 36 and goes down all along to finish at the third toe. So we have lots of branches on the stomach meridian. So let me recap it really quickly so you kind of get an idea, right? We start at the elanasi or the side of the nose. We go up to the eye along the, the, the side of the cheeks down to the jaw up along the side of the ear to the head. First branch starts at stomach five, goes down along the side of the neck, enters the body at the supraclavicular fossa to connect with the stomach and the spleen organ. The second branch starts at the supraclavicular fossa. Of course, it's on the same side, right? I just changed side for the sake of the drawing, but everything is bilateral in those meridians. So we're going to go all the way down to the whole trunk with a lot of points, and then on the lateral abs aspect of the thigh, to the knee, to the lower leg, to the ankle, all the way until we finish at the second toe, lateral side. We have one branch starting at stomach 42, which connects to spleen one on the middle aspect of your big toe. And we also have an extra branch that starts at stomach 36 and finishes at the third toe. Two. So this is a big meridian with lots of branches and so many actions. You are going to love it. So let's look at all the locations, how to locate all those points, and how to look at their function in an easy way. This is again part one. Part two will have 31 to 45. So this is we're going to look at stomach one to stomach 30. And then you can look and watch part two, which are going to be, the link will be uh, below in the description below this video. And then you can watch stomach 31 to stomach 45, which there's a lot to say about those because there's a lot of special points on part two. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, so let's start with the location of stomach one, which is considered a dangerous point because it's located between the eyeball and the infraorbital ridge, so behind the ridge, at the center of the pupil. I've never needled stomach one. I haven't, there's pretty much I've needled all the points, but this is one of them I've never needled. That one and REN1, I've never done REN1 either. Every other point, I've needled. Just, you know, just saying in passing. <laughs> stomach two is located in the infraorbital foramen directly below the center of the pupil. This is a point a lot of people are really scared because there is a bundle of nerves that enters the foramen, but it is really, really safe and it works really well. Stomach three is going to be located at the level of the elanasi and the center of the pupil. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Let me show you on this picture. Here we go. 
you can see the center and then that's three. And then four is 0.5 soon from the corner of the lips. Those four stomach points have similar functions for Bell's palsy and facial paralysis. Also, stomach one and stomach two can be used for red eyes or eye twitching. Pretty easy, simple. Next! Stomach five is located at the anterior border of the masseter, which is our chewing muscle, at the level of the mandible. So it's an easy one to locate. Stomach six is actually going to be located at the bulge, the highest prominence of the masseter. When we clench, the masseter gets activated and there is a bulge to it. It's also one finger breadth from the mandible angle. Stomach seven is anterior to the ear, and when we open the mouth, the condyloid process is going to push against our finger, and it is below the zygomatic arch, right where the condyloid process is pushed against our finger when we open our mouth, and of course, anterior to the ear. Stomach eight is four and a half soon lateral to the midline, half a soon anterior to the hairline, because this is nine, remember, from both angles. So, that's for those points. Let's look at their functions. Stomach five is used for jaw pain, local pain, or lower jaw toothache, and is part of a protocol for facial paralysis or Bell's palsy. I love stomach six. Why? Because it is a ghost point. As a ghost point, it is the best acupuncture point for PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorders. And people that have post-traumatic stress disorders have tendency to clench their jaw, so that's why it's also obviously really well located for that local pain. If you want to know more about the ghost points, check out this video here. I have all about the ghost points. They're fantastic to use in clinical practice, so click the link above. In the meantime, let's continue to talk about stomach six, which I love. It can be used just like stomach five as toothache, a pain for the lower jaw. Obviously, we still have to go and check out why there is pain. But in the meantime, specifically combined with LI4, LI4 and stomach six, when there's lower jaw, jaw, sorry, lower jaw toothache, it is really useful to bring down the inflammation and the pain. It also is a great point to have as part of a protocol, like the first five one on the stomach's channel that we looked at, for facial paralysis or Bell's palsy. In my practice, I have treated Bell's palsy many, many times, very successfully, specifically if we can start acupuncture treatment ASAP, because there is nothing much conventional medicine can do for Bell's palsy, and it is quite common. So to restore the facial um, you know, strength and having the face back to its normal shape, that is what we want to do acupuncture is the best bet. Another amazing point, stomach seven, does the same thing that we just talked about with stomach six and five, is jaw pain, clenching jaw, toothache, Bell's palsy, or being part of a protocol for Bell's palsy with all the other points. But what I love stomach seven for, it is the best point for trigeminal neuralgia because of where it's located. So it really is very useful. Uh, we can use it for ear pain as well, or tinnitus, but that is probably not the best point. But remember that stomach seven, trigeminal neuralgia works awesome. Of course, always do a TCM diagnosis to make sure you get the right root cause addressed as well. Stomach eight is, I think in my opinion, underutilized. It is one of the best points to combine with long seven for migraines, specifically while they're happening, right? And I use this a lot in pregnancy because we can't use LI4 during pregnancy, which is one of the best points for headaches and pain. But stomach eight combined with distal point long seven and Sanjiao five works really well to bring that migraine down. Of course, it can also be used for dizziness, for eye pain, and being part of, again, of a protocol for Bell's palsy and uh, facial paralysis. To locate stomach 9, 10, and 11, we have to be aware of the location and palpating where the SEM is. The SEM is the sternocleidomastoid muscle on the neck. So stomach 9 is going to be anterior to the SEM at the level of the laryngeal prominence. Laryngeal prominence, also called Adam's apple. So that's where stomach 9 is. Stomach 11 is going to be between the sternal and clavicle heads of the SEM when they insert in the clavicle and in the sternum. 
that's where it's going to be located. And stomach 10 is halfway between stomach 9 and stomach 11. Easy. Stomach 9, 10, 11 all on the neck are going to be great for cough, for sore throat, but also for thyroid growth, to try to reduce or stop the growth. This is really useful. Um, also, stomach 9 is great for high blood pressure. Again, those points are going to be a little bit more... You have to watch for the carotid artery, specifically of stomach 9. So a lot of people are very nervous, but, you know, use stomach 11 if that makes you feel better. It works really well, again, when there is thyroid growth. So locating the points on the chest for the stomach meridian is going to be very easy. We're going to use the length of the clavicle from the acromion to the midline. This is 8 soon. And so we are going to put those points at 4 soon lateral to the midline, which means halfway on this distance. The nipple is a landmark that's often is used because it is for soon lateral to the midline for men, specifically thin men. But for women, it won't work, specifically when women are laying down and they have heavy breasts or bigger breasts. Gravity is going to pull to the side and it is not going to be accurate. So we can't really use the nipple. Really using the distance from the acromion to the midline is your best bet to figure out where that fort soon lateral to the midline is, which is going to be for all the points we're going to talk right now. So stomach 12 itself is going to be located in the supracalavicular fossa. Stomach 13 is directly below the clavicle. 14 is on the first intercostal space. 15 is on the second. 16 is on the third. 17 is on the fourth intercostal space. And 18 is on the fifth intercostal space. So that's where they're all going to be located and they are all fort soon lateral to the midline. We don't need all stomach 17 and for the rest of them, most of them are going to be oblique, uh, not perpendicular. Please do not do perpendicular as the lungs are located below the intercostal space. So let's look at those functions. Stomach 12 is not used a lot and it is counterindicated during pregnancy because a lot of meridians will go through stomach 12 to enter the body at the supraclavicular fossa. But it can be used for tonsillitis, cough, and asthma. Probably not the best point. There are better points than this. So, you know, you can bypass it. It's all good. <laughs> I love when points have similar function. It's easy to remember and it's easy to put them in the same basket. So stomach 13, 14, 15, and 16, all are going to be local for cough, for rib pain, upper rib pain, upper chest, right? And chest pain and asthma. Mostly you're gonna use them locally. That's the easiest way to use those four points. Stomach 17 is actually a landmark only point. We don't needle it. But what I love about it is that for women specifically, this is where breast milk is issued, right? And stomach 17 is a point that is crossing on the Chong Mai, which is the Chong vessel, which is the sea of blood vessel. And breast milk is considered life blood. So it comes from not having a period for women when women are not having a period, they are creating the breast milk to be able to feed the baby. So this is really interesting to me because eventually women will start having the period and then they'll say, my milk supply is starting to lower unless they are very, very healthy and they don't have any blood deficiency, which is pretty rare with women because most women have a little bit of blood deficiency. Stomach 18 is a great point to obviously local for cough and for rib pain and chest feeling full, but it's a great point for lack of breast milk to stimulate the breast milk, specifically combined with small intestine 1 and spleen 18. Those three points together with REN 17. REN 17 also opens the chest and allow for better flow. So those four points, small intestine 1, stomach 18, spleen 18, and REN 17, great to increase the flow of the breast milk. Are you enjoying my graphics so far? Well, you can find them all in my Acupoint Made Easy, an illustrated guide to all acupuncture points, and so much more. The PDF version has a lot of video links. You can download it on your phone, your tablet, your computer, and have it at your fingertips at any time. It has a great table of contents. The hard copy ships all over the world if you're someone that loves to hold a book and really enjoy the colorful 
part of my graphics. You'll find them all exactly the same as the PDF in the hard copy book. The feedback has been amazing. As you could see here, so many people have just loved the book or the PDF or both. So what are you waiting for? Click the link below and get your copy today. Let's get back to what we're talking about today. So the next bunch of stomach points are all going to be located on the abdominal region, and they are all going to be too soon lateral to the midline. The easiest way to do this is to look at the belly button and start with stomach 25, even though it's the last point on the way down at the belly button, right? But you start with stomach 25 and it's too soon lateral to the belly button. Now, another thing to remember is that there is a distance between the sternal angle and the belly button, which is eight tsun, right? From the sternal angle to the belly button is eight tsun. So stomach 19 starts too soon below that, right? And all of them are going to be one soon from each other going down until we reach the belly button, which is stomach 25. So those are six tsun that we're gonna come down to with seven points. So stomach 25 is too soon lateral to the midline, of course, and that's the sternal angle to the belly button, which is eight tsun. Stomach 19 is six tsun above stomach 25. Stomach 20 is five tsun above 25. Stomach 21 is four tsun above stomach 25. Stomach 22 is three tsun above stomach 25. Stomach 23 is two tsun above 25. And stomach 24 is one tsun above 25. And of course, 25 is at the level of the belly button. Pretty simple. Those are easy to locate. Perpendicular insertion, done. Let's look at their functions. Stomach 19 and 20 are all going to be mostly upper digestive tract issues like bloating, indigestion, stomach pain, vomiting, nausea, acid reflux. Pretty simple, pretty easy, but I think stomach 21 is the best point of the three. Because stomach 21 is at the level of REN12, I think that REN12 and stomach 21 have really strong purpose when it comes to the stomach. So it is the better point, in my opinion, for bloating and digestion and nausea, vomiting, anything happening in the digestive tract, tract sorry, specifically the upper digestive tract, right? Stomach, small intestine, duodenum, that would be the better point. Although REN12 is the front move point of the stomach, so that would be the best point. Stomach 22, 23, and 24 are all again going to address all digestive issues, a little bit more upper digestive issues like nausea, vomiting, stomach pain, indigestion, feeling irritable specifically due to indigestion, and maybe also diarrhea. So mostly for acute diarrhea, not necessarily chronic. Let's talk about the next point, which is one of my favorites. Stomach 25 is the front move point of the large intestine, so it makes it really powerful when it comes to lower digestive tract disorders, such as bloating, constipation, diarrhea, IBS, indigestion, anything happening in the bowel, this is the best point, hands down. Having said that, we need to combine it, right? Now, this is what you want to do, right? Stomach 25 is great, but combined with REN9 and REN6, it forms the digestive diamonds, which is so useful for any bowel issue. In clinical practice, if you still can't do a diagnosis or you're not sure of your diagnosis, this protocol works like a charm. It works for acute or chronic issues, and the results are amazing. I've seen it over and over and over. What I love about it is that you want to go clockwise for constipation and counterclockwise for diarrhea. So clockwise means you're going with the flow of the colon, meaning you go ascending colon, transverse colon, and descending. That's your clockwise. Make sense? That's how you needle starting with REN9 and then go all the way down. Now, if you're doing diarrhea, you do the opposite. You start with REN6, and then you go towards the descending colon with stomach 25, and then up to REN9, and down to stomach 25, which is along the ascending colon. Does that make sense? So counterclockwise for diarrhea, clockwise 
for constipation in the flow of the colon. This is a fantastic protocol. So when it comes to the lower abdominal region, all points again are going to be lateral to the midline, which you can use a clavicle to take a quarter of that distance. And then we're gonna go one soon at a time below the belly button. Now the distance between the belly button and the upper border of the pubic symphysis bone is five soon. So that's how we're gonna divide it. What's interesting is some of us have very short area and so our tsun are very small and some of us are very long in that area and our tsun are much bigger. So you're gonna to have to gauge and play with it until you figure out how to do this because it's not that easy, I have to say. But having said that, all points are too soon lateral to the midline. The distance between the belly, button, the belly button and the upper border of the pubic symphysis is five. Stomach 26 is too soon lateral as we know. One soon below the belly button. Stomach 27 is too soon below the belly button. Stomach 28 is three soon below the belly button. Stomach 29 is four soon below the belly button. And stomach 30 is too soon lateral at the level of the upper border of the pubic symphysis bones. So those are the points that we needle perpendicular. Let's look at their functions. Stomach 26 also addresses issues of the lower digestive tract, but it's a great point to moxa when there is excess cold affecting the uterus, creating cramping during menstruation. So this menorrhea due to excess cold, this is a great point. Taking a little pause here, a little breather, just to remind you that on my website resource page, I have tons of more case study, treatment protocol, foundation diagnosis courses, so much more for you to enjoy and to support you. Don't forget acuporacademy.com. Tons of more researches. Researches? Well, I'm not going to edit that. Resources, not researches. Resources. Although there are a lot of research on acupuncture. If people ask you, is there research? It's all over the internet. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, and make sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment so I know you're enjoying my content and I keep getting more feedback so I know I can create more for you to enjoy. Let's get back to the stomach channel. With acupuncture, a lot of points address women's reproductive disorder issues because the woman has to go through a lot with menstruation, pregnancy, menopause, etc. We don't have a lot of points that address men issue. Stomach 27 is one of them specifically, so I love that. And you can combine it with kidney 10, which is another point that's really good for the male reproductive system. So stomach 27 is great for seminal emission, for uh, premature ejaculation, and scanty urination, like having difficulty in urinating, specifically in men. Stomach 28 harmonizes the digestive system, but it's not the best point. It does, though, benefit the bladder for urine retention and UTIs. So that's a great point to use for that purpose, and it can be used for hernia as well, inguinal hernia. Stomach 29 is very different because it actually warms the uterus. So we can use moxa or needling, and it is right where the ovaries are. So it can be used for fertility, dysmenorrhea, amenorrhea, irregular menstruation, anovulation. It really stimulates the ovaries. So it's a really good point. I talk about it in my fertility course. And if you've never seen it, check out my fertility course up here. Uh, it's one of my popular online courses. So check it out link right here. But it is a really good point, stomach 29, to stimulate the ovaries, specifically when it's combined with other points, of course, not just by itself. It can also be used for uterus prolapse with spleen 6, combined with spleen 6, sorry, do 20 and REN 6. Great combo to get that uterus sucked right back in, specifically if it's only stage 2. If it's stage 4, that's a different story. Stomach 30, the last point on the trunk from the stomach meridian. It is a point that's great for local inguinal hernia pain. Very good to relieve that. Yes, it can be used for constipation, and diarrhea, but it's not the best point. The digestive diamond would do that much better. It can also be used for genitalia pain or external genitalia pain and swelling for men or women. Great point to finish the trunk with. Let's review all the acupuncture points of the stomach channel. 
Let's do it from stomach one to stomach 30 for the part one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all can be used as part of a protocol for Bell's palsy or facial paralysis. Stomach one and two can also be used for eye twitch and red eyes. Stomach five can be used for jaw pain, a clenching jaw, stomach six as well. On top of it, stomach six is a ghost point for PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Stomach seven, best point for trigeminal neuralgia. And stomach eight, really good for migraines, specifically combined with long seven and LI4. Sanjiao five would be a really good point for that to, to add in that protocol. Of course, making a diagnosis is always important. Stomach 9, 10, and 11 all on the neck, so can address issue of the coughing, sore throat, and growth on the thyroid. Stomach 9 also addresses issue of high blood pressure. Stomach 12, because of its location, is not used, and it is a counterindicated point during pregnancy, so it's not very common. It's on top of the uh, long apex, so it could be a little bit tricky. Needling should be shallow, very local, cough, asthma, etc. 13, 14, 15, 16, all for rib pain, local chest pain, and cough and asthma as well. 17 is a location landmark point only. 18, stomach 18 is great for lack of breast milk, specifically combined with small intestine 1, REN 17, and spleen 18. Stomach 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Whoa, we can group them all together for digestive issues such as vomiting, indigestion, nausea, stomach pain, diarrhea, all this. I think stomach one is one of the best points because it is parallel or in line with REN12 being the front move point of the stomach. Stomach 25 is awesome because it is the front moo point of the large intestine, the front moo point of the large intestine. So anything happening in the colon, diarrhea, constipation, etc., this is the best point. Having said that, the digestive diamond, which combines stomach 25 with REN9 and REN6, is awesome for any kind of lower digestive tract issues, from IBS to constipation to diarrhea, to anything happening on the lower part. Stomach 26 is great when there is excess cold affecting the uterus. So it breaks the cold, specifically if you do moxa, if there is dysmenorrhea due to excess cold. Stomach 27 is one of the rare points that is more of a male reproductive system point and is great for um, seminal emission, premature ejaculation, and also for urine retention. Stomach 28 also is good when there is bladder issues such as UTI and urine retention. Stomach 29 is located right where the ovaries are. So it's great to stimulate the ovaries and it warms the uterus. So moxa in stomach 29 is great for fertility issue, anovulation, menstruation pain, irregular menstruation. Great point to add to the protocol. And stomach 30 at the bottom of the trunk, the last stomach point on the trunk is really good to use for inguinal hernia. And that will be part one of all the stomach channel acupuncture points from 1 to 30 recapped in less than two minutes. Woohoo! <laughs> and part two link is in the description below for stomach 31 to stomach 45. Those are fantastic points and I can't wait for you to watch part two of the stomach channel. I hope you enjoyed the content today and found a lot of value into it. Please subscribe so you do not miss out on any future videos and watch those two here to have more content for you to enjoy and absorb. Have a fantastic day and no matter what, keep rocking it using TCM.